This is the Doubles Only Tennis Podcast, where you learn the best tips and strategies in the world to help you become a smarter, more effective tennis player. You'll hear interviews with pro tour doubles players and coaches, including easy to use lessons to improve your game and win more matches. My name is Will Bocek, founder of the Tennis Tribe, doubles strategy coach, and host of the show. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Today we're going to cover how to beat a lefty. So if you remember from last week or if you haven't had the chance to listen, go back and listen to um, the episode from last week where I talked about how to play with a left-handed player and win. And today we're going to talk about how to beat a left-handed player. Uh, So this is going to um, I'm going to be talking about a lefty righty combo because that's obviously what you will play against the most. Uh, maybe at some point um, I can talk about how to play against two left handed players, but I feel like that's so rare that uh, it probably doesn't warrant its own episode at this point. Um, but regardless, today we're going to talk about how to beat a left handed and right handed player um, when you're playing against them. And before I dive into that, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all the listeners. Um, y'all have uh, continued to spread the word about the podcast, and uh, I, I, I'm still amazed that um, all of you enjoy listening to me uh, talk about double strategy and nerd out on all of this stuff. Um, it's been a lot of fun, uh, and I've received a lot of emails from you um, recently uh, talking about how it's helped you and helped your um USTA league matches or tournament matches or whatever it may be. And I I really appreciate the support. Um, It means a lot. So uh, without uh, further delay, let's dive into this episode on how to beat a lefty righty combo. So we're going to start with when the left-handed player is serving, and then I'll dive into when they're at the net, and then we'll talk about when the opponents are returning. So To start, when the lefty is serving, we'll start with the deuce court. Um, So obviously with that lefty serve, it makes that T serve on the deuce side a little bit more accessible, a little bit easier for them. So uh, if you are returning in the deuce court and a left-handed player is serving, uh, you do want to shift your position a little bit to your left. Um, The the wide serve on that side is notoriously a difficult serve for left-handed players. So Even if they do beat you there, uh, if they see you shifting left, a lot of times what will happen is um, they'll beat you there on occasion, but you'll actually get a lot more second serve looks because they'll be trying to hit that serve, and it's a much lower percentage first serve for them. So they're going to miss a lot more first serves by you kind of almost forcing them to hit that, uh, that wide serve in the deuce court. So shift a little bit to the left. Um, The same is true of the ad court. The ad court even more so. Um, Left-handed players love that slice serve out wide. They have a little bit more court to work with um, since they're going over the low part of the net and have that kind of deep corner of the service box to aim for. Uh, So if you're an ad court player, you have to shift even more to your left. Uh, Against a lot of players, I'll start um, almost with both feet in the doubles alley. Uh, At... I'll typically at least start with one foot in the doubles alley. Um, And let me clarify that by in the doubles alley, I'm actually behind the baseline, but if you extend the doubles alley, um, my left foot would would be in that extension of the doubles alley. Uh, But you want to shift really, really far to your left. And again, the T serve on the ad side is a more difficult serve for them. So um, take away that really comfortable lefty slice serve. And then once they do hit the serve, we have to think about the spin. I talked about this a little bit in the last episode, but the ball is naturally going to bounce off of your strings and go to the right. So if you're in the deuce court and they hit that slice serve down the tee, you're hitting a backhand and that spin is going to take that ball down the line. So we really have to focus on aiming further to the left because the spin is going to bring it to the right. If you're in the ad court and they're hitting the lefty slice out wide to your backhand, uh, you can aim a little bit more at that net player and the ball's naturally going to go to the right as it spins off of your strings. Um, The same is true if you're hitting a runaround forehand, so keep that in mind. Um, It's actually one of of my favorite returns against a left-handed player, and I do return from the ad court, is 
is stepping around that lefty slice when I can uh, and hitting an inside out forehand. And because of the natural spin of the lefty slice, it typically lands very short in the court and all the way over into the doubles alley. So it puts them in kind of an awkward running forehand position um, where they have to kind of scoop it up back cross court to me. And then I have an inside out forehand there that I can either take through the middle of the court or go back to the doubles alley behind them as they try to recover. Um, So that's a tactic that I like to use against lefties. But regardless, keep in mind the spin. It's going to go to the right off of your strings. Uh, And then if you're at a more advanced level and you're playing against players who have a kick serve, the lefty kick is really difficult to handle because it, it kicks the opposite direction. So... One thing I like to think about, uh, if you are a more advanced player, when I'm playing a lefty with a a good kick serve, um, and I'm in the ad court, typically that that right-handed kick is going to kick up and away from my backhand. So the lefty kick is going to kick more into my body. So what I try to focus on is hitting the ball with the top of my racket, literally like the outside of my frame, because what's going to happen naturally is because it's kicking towards me and I'm used to that kick serve kicking away from me, I end up hitting the ball way down at the bottom of the strings. So if you try to focus, especially early on, on uh, hitting that backhand with almost the top of your racket for right-handed players, um, if if it's a kick to your forehand side, the opposite's true. You're going to try to focus on hitting it uh, with the bottom of your racket. It'll end up actually a little bit closer to the center of the strings than you might think. So that way you can avoid... Um, kind of shanking the return, which you do see a lot of right-handed players uh, do really often um, against left-handed serves, especially those kick serves because they kick the opposite direction. So focus on hitting it off the end of your racket for your backhand, off the the kind of bottom triangle area of your forehand. And I promise you this adjustment um, will help you, uh, even though it'll feel a little bit weird and you'll feel like you're not uh, swinging the right way. Um, because of the the natural spin of the lefty kick, uh, it should help you out a lot. Um, so that's how I think about when the lefty's serving. Now, what about when their partner's serving and the left-handed player is at the net? So when the left-handed player is at the net uh, and you're returning in the deuce court, um, I really don't think about this any differently than, than playing against a right-handed player. Um, everything's just flipped. So in the deuce court, now the lefty is at the net and they have their forehand volley down the line, their backhand volley in the middle. So in the deuce court, um, this is going to be a little bit easier return for you than when you have a right-handed player at the net because uh, they're not going to have quite as much reach cross court. So you should be able to just return um, routine cross court balls uh, back to the opponent. Uh, you can even lob cross court because that left-handed player is going to have a backhand volley in the middle. Um, most of them won't have that kind of jumping backhand overhead uh, from the middle of the court. So if if you need a lob cross court, you can do that. Um, But it does take away the down the line return a little bit uh, in the traditional formation. So if you are going to return down the line, you probably need to go for it uh, and go for the winner there. Um, Or uh, if you're not going to do that, one of the best, um, what I recommend more often actually is to really just kind of rip the ball through the middle of the court a little bit to the right of that center net strap. And that's going to create some confusion for the opponent. So the backhands are in the middle at this point. Um, The left-handed player at the net might stab at a backhand volley and either miss it or pop it up. And if they let it get through, the server is going to be hitting a backhand that they may not be used to hitting if they're playing with a right-handed player because the right-handed player at the net would have a forehand volley. So um, that's one of the best areas to target, especially against a second serve. Uh, If you have some time to run around your backhand or or step in and hit a good solid forehand through the middle of the court, um, that's definitely one of the best areas to target in the deuce court. Now, when we're talking about the ad court, um, it gets a little tougher because they have that forehand volley in the middle. The forehands um, for both players are in the middle, assuming they're playing traditional formation. Uh, so the best place to target typically is going to be, um, a little bit further cross court so that the left-handed player, uh, can't get to it. Um, and this, of course, this all depends on 
how aggressive that net player is, how good they are at the net, how good is the opponent from the baseline, um, all that sort of stuff that you would take into any match um, in terms of double strategy. Uh, but just keep in mind, in general, those left-handed players are going to be able to pick off a few more balls in the ad court than the deuce court. Uh, and then also that down the line lob is open more in the ad court when the left-handed player is at the net because they have their backhand volley now uh, down the line in the ad court. So you can either uh, lob it down the line and they're going to have a high backhand overhead. The server will probably go cover that with their forehand since they're a right-handed player. Um, or if you do have a good kind of inside in run around forehand that you can take down the line. Uh, this is a really great opportunity to hit that return and you don't actually have to go for the all out winner because they have a backhand volley there. Um, what they're likely to do is miss or pop the ball up. Uh, and you, ideally your partner is going to know that you're going for this so that they can kind of pinch towards the middle. And if, if that opponent does pop the ball up a little bit, they can be there to clean it up. Uh, or you can step forward for the next ball um, to finish the point there, or at least approach the net and get into a good position to finish the point. So um, again, it, one of the keys here is is just to kind of know where their forehands and backhands are on the deuce court. Uh, ripping through the middle of the court is a really good strategy because the backhands are there. Add court, you can play down the line and a little bit wider, uh, a little bit more so. Now, if they use I formation or Australian formation, um, the same things kind of apply, and this is going to really depend on what you're comfortable with. So um, there's nothing special about a lefty-righty combo playing I or Australian other than once they do get into the positions that they're going to be in um, or their side of the court, you need to just recognize uh, as well as your partner needs to recognize uh where are the backhands and where are the forehands? And, and you'll play through the middle of the court if the backhands are in the middle. Uh, play a little bit more when you can to the outside uh, or down the line to the backhands when the forehands are in the middle. Um, so next we will talk a little bit about uh, when the opponent is returning for uh, a lefty-righty combo. So when a left-handed player is returning you really want to treat them like any other player. You want to be testing out their forehand return, their backhand return, cross court, down the line, and so on. But there are a few things um, that I find work a little bit better against a left-handed player. So um, we'll start with the deuce court. Uh, most left-handed players will return uh, from the deuce court, um, which is what I typically recommend uh, because that way, once the point does get started, they do have four hands in the middle. Um, with their right-handed partner. But uh, if they're returning in the deuce court, um, the wide serve can be really effective. And I find a lot of players, uh, right-handed teams, don't know what to do with it. So they'll hit that wide serve, and then they'll just call, get caught in that cross-court rally. And if you think about the wide serve, uh, the slice wide serve to a lefty's backhand in the deuce court, uh, and the server's right-handed, so this is the same thing as a lefty slice serve to a righty's ad court backhand. So the spin is going to, uh, instead of, like I talked about um, a little bit earlier, that lefty spin is going to come off of your racket and go to the right. That righty slice spin is going to come off of uh, your racket and go to the left. So when the lefty's hitting that backhand from out wide, in the deuce court, that ball is naturally going to move off of their strings and come to their left. So what happens is a lot of players will hit that slice serve and then their net player will cover the alley too much. And that gives the lefty a wide open routine cross court backhand. So what you can do is either pinch or poach out of regular formation, knowing that that down the line return is a very, very difficult shot for that left handed player um, off of a right handed slice serve. Uh, another thing you can do if you're comfortable with it is use I or Australian formation and force them to hit that down the line return. Uh, because the ball is going to be moving back to their left, uh, they're going to, if they try to hit it down the line, it's most likely going to come a little bit more towards the center of the court and land somewhere uh, in the singles court. 
and the server, if they have to cover line, uh, might even have time to run around their backhand and hit a forehand. Um, if not, you'll probably force a lot of errors that way, or you can run eye formation and have the net player shift a little bit to their left, giving up the entire doubles alley and maybe even some of the singles court. Uh, you'll see this happen a lot at the pro level where the serves are so good that they're, they're willing to give up you know, six feet of space um, from the double sideline because they know the odds of you hitting that spot are, are so low. So um, think about that and just make sure your net player when you're hitting that slice serve in the deuce court is not covering the line too much because it's just such a difficult backhand down the line return uh, for that left-handed player for all the same reasons that that backhand down the line return in the ad court is difficult for me and you as right-handed players against a lefty slice serve. So uh, start there, um, try that. Uh, the T serve can be effective as well, depending on their forehand return. Um, I personally like the body T serve against a, a lefty player, so kind of jamming into their forehand, uh, but it depends on the opponent. Um, when we're looking at the ad court, uh, at this point, backhands are in the middle, so um, one effective thing you can do if the lefty is returning in the ad court is uh, you can start with I or Australian formation and serve down the T. Now, this will give them a relatively easy down the line backhand return, and that ball, again, is going to spin off their racket and go down the line anyways. But what you're doing is you're setting up uh, your forehand ground stroke and you're able to take your forehand back through the middle of the court to their backhand. And this is assuming that their backhand's a little bit weaker. But you're creating a matchup that, that you'll typically win, assuming uh, y'all are both kind of traditional uh, players where your forehand's going to be a little bit better than your backhand. Um, if you're uh, wanting to stick with regular formation, um, I still like the T-serve a lot. Uh, that inside-out backhand return is a return that um, right-handed players struggle with from the deuce court, left-handed players struggle with it from the ad court. So if you can hit that T-serve, uh, it's a great um, serve to hit as well. Uh, and then outside of that, just mix it up and see what that particular player um, is most effective with. Be sure to test their down-the-line return um, on their forehand and backhand side, as well as the cross-court return. Mix in some net movement. Uh, don't cover the line too much. All the kind of traditional um, serving strategy uh, tips that I would give. Um, so what about rallying? So once the point gets going, the, the biggest key to rallying against a lefty-righty combo is just knowing where the backhands are. Um, when they're returning, it's pretty obvious because it's going to be the same every time. Um, so if the lefty's in the deuce court, backhands are in the middle. If the righty, lefty's on the ad court, backhands, um, I'm sorry, if the lefty's in the deuce court, forehands are in the middle. If the lefty's in the ad court, backhands are in the middle. So knowing this is really, really key. And I actually talk with my partner uh, before each point and we'll say backhands in the middle, backhands on the outside, backhands in the middle, backhands on the outside. Um, and it's rotating every point while the opponents are serving. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, and the reason this is so important is because, in general, players are not going to beat you at the club level uh, as often with their backhand ground stroke. It's just much, much less common. Um, and backhand volley as well. Backhand volley is going to yield a lot more errors. So if we know that the backhands are going to be in the middle during this point, or they're going to be on the outside during this point, um, if I get into any kind of neutral or um, defensive position then I'm able to rally to that spot that I know the backhands are to try to stay in the point and kind of neutralize uh, the opponent's um, offensive position if they are in one. So um, if the backhands are in the middle, it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to kind of rally everything through the middle of the court, uh, try to get forward if that's your playing style, or set up your partner uh, up there at the net um, as you continue to kind of go through the middle and try to force errors uh, with the backhand volleys and backhand ground strokes from the opponent. If they're on the outside, it's a little more complicated. Um, depending on what you're comfortable with, if you can uh, go you know, hard angle cross court to the opponent's backhand, that can be effective. Uh, if you get a neutral or short forehand, 
uh, and want to go down the line at the opposing net player's backhand volley, that can be effective. Um, or approach down the line um, if that player's back. Uh, you can approach to their backhand and then come forward. That can be really effective as well. Um, it's a little more complicated, but the point is to try as best you can without um, taking on too much risk to get it to the opponent's backhands. Uh, and again, before each point, especially when the opponents are serving, talk with your partner and say, okay, backhands are in the middle here or backhands are on the outside here. And focus on getting it there without totally forcing it, um, if that makes sense, especially when the backhands uh, are on the outside. So um, those are the things I really focus on against a lefty-righty combo. Uh, hopefully this helped you out. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me, will at the tennistribe.com, uh, and I will um, get back to you as soon as I can. And thank you again, everyone, for uh, for listening, for sharing the podcast, and uh, for all the emails and support over the last uh, couple of months. It's been a lot of fun doing this, and um, I look forward to more. So uh, I will talk to you next week. If you're a doubles player, you'll love our weekly strategy newsletter. Every Thursday, I send you my best doubles tips, tactics, and strategies that you can use in your very next match. And when you sign up, I'll also send you a free 20-page ebook that has my favorite doubles tactics for forcing errors and getting more easy volleys at the net. Go to thetennistribe.com newsletter to sign up now.